We're still on mute. Bruce and Cindy Campbell. Bruce. Fred, your mic is hot. I understand. Thank you. Okay, for those of you in just one second, uh, for those of you who are here in the room, you might want to go ahead and take your seats. Um, at least those on Zoom, they can hear me, correct, even if they can't see me yet? See you and hear you. Can you repeat that? We can see and hear you. Oh, okay, good. I wasn't sure if they had everything up and running. Um, well, welcome everyone. This is a great meeting we're going to have tonight. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming and joining us. For those who are not aware, I'm Michelle Tyson, currently the president for the Fort Worth Astronomical Society. Uh, I do want to tell you about a raffle. We do have a raffle up front. We draw tickets. You win a prize if your ticket number matches. The uh, you can get one ticket for a dollar, or if you want to three ticket or spend three dollars, you get five tickets. So we've got uh, I think we've got some lenses up here, picture books, magazines. So you you know you get to choose on that, and that does help support the club. Do we, Do we have anybody tonight who is visiting who's not, who's not a member? I thought I, thought I saw that face. face. Yes. Uh, hold, uh, on. hold on. This is where I get to play like it's let's make a deal. Like let's take the mic to you. As long as it's not TikTok. Uh, my name is Randall Lawson. Actually, a couple of years ago, I donated a Orion somehow, and then um, recently decided to get back into it. So I've got a new Ioptron mount and a SP Boney 102 refractor, and I'm struggling a little bit, but I'm hopefully going to get it. Welcome, welcome, and I know there are people in our club who can help you with that. Do we have any other visitors? Oh. I'm Christine Gringen. First time here. Um, online search. Thank you. Welcome. Anybody else that I missed? Okay. Very good. And uh, I do know, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not, I'm not supposed to hold it in front of the speaker, I've been told. So I'm trying to behave myself. Uh, John, okay, I had to locate you because you switched positions on me last month. Um, I have a Jonathan Russell that has joined over the past month. Is that the only new member? Jonathan, are you here? Are you on Zoom? If you are, welcome, and hopefully we will get to see you soon. I do also want to uh, recognize and to thank the board members who are here tonight. Um, John Jeromini is our treasurer. Those of you who have not yet paid your dues, see him. <laughs> um, anybody who is visiting who would like to join, John can help you with that. He's our treasurer. Zach Smith, helping with Zoom. He's our secretary. He's been taking care of us in that respect. Robert Circus is our vice president who helps take care of all of our programs. Um, and then we have open directors on our board. Tom Roth, 
Phil Stage. Cy is not here tonight, and John Baker, I don't believe I've seen him tonight. His, his schedule recently changed. Um, this is, for except for a couple of the board members, going to be um, uh, the changeover. We have our elections today, and July 1st, you have a new set of executive board members filling those positions. I do want to thank everyone who's served on the board the last couple of years because you've been very supportive. The last couple of years for this club has been very different, to say the least, going through COVID and no meetings and Zoom meetings and in-person meetings and combination meetings. And the board has really done a great job in helping to guide and make the decisions on when we could start holding star parties again and, and how we could make everything work. So I want to thank all of you for that. Thank you very much. Um, I've, for those of you especially who are new, a little bit of the club history. The Fort Worth Astronomical Society actually started after a group of young astronomers came together and the adults, their parents were enjoying it so much, they formed their own adult club. That was in 1949, so that's been, what, 73 years ago that this club was formed? So it's, it's a long-standing club. And uh, so it's, it's always been, been wonderful to see it grow. We do invite everybody to participate who's a member of our club. Uh, as I said, if you've got something you need to learn about or need some help with, there's probably somebody in the club who can help you with that. Uh, one of the things I've always loved about this club and thought is one of its strengths is the variety of interests. We have people with telescopes who just like to look at stuff in the sky. We have a great set of astrophotographers who let us look at all their wonderful photographs. We have some who work with binoculars. We have some who work with just photography, using cameras and the larger versions of the night sky. Um, I have learned, and I think tonight our program is about something that I had not known about until a few weeks ago. Uh, and, and I think Robbie is going to teach us about a, a different way of viewing this. To me, is almost a combination of looking up at the sky and the astrophotography. So it'll be interesting to learn about that. Okay. We have outreach available. And Patrick, wherever he went to, ah, you want to tell us about Dinosaur Valley? Patrick? Works, works with most of our, of our outreach, the requests that come in from schools and churches and sometimes individuals. And then he also works with Dinosaur Valley. Thank you. So uh, this past Saturday, we had the uh, June uh, Star Parade Dino Valley. It actually worked out despite that big thunderstorm with us here. By the time it got dark, it actually cleared out. Decent skies had about 115 uh, visitors, and I think we had about four or five skills I can't remember. We had a good amount. We helped out. So uh, for July, we're not going to have one down there. It was a little scheduling conflict. Our next one in down in Dino Valley would be August 20th. And any upcoming star parties, so the next one I believe is going to be Tandy Hills, and then I got one in Hazlitt on the 16th of July. So it's kind of slow right now. Thank you, Patrick. John McRae, ah, you're here. John McRae is our liaison with Tandy Hills, where we also have a monthly star party. Yeah, we do have uh, one coming up July the 9th. Uh, that is our next Tandy Hill star party. Our last one in June, we had two scopes and three members, about 30 to 40 visitors, which were very, very interested. Uh, one of them, I think Pam said, even uh, ordered a scope uh, on her phone. Well, yeah, while we were sitting there, we had people sitting, had, they brought blankets and chairs and sat out there and just had a, a good old time. Well, the next one, July 9, uh, is going to be uh, our summer constellations. Be, they won't be as bright as they were at Dinosaur Valley, but they'll still be, uh, we'll be able to see them, hopefully. No planets yet. Uh, the moon, ten and a half day old, uh, waxing uh, gibbous moon. So come on out and join us. Thank you, John. And thank you to Patrick and uh, Don for both 
helping to coordinate all of that outreach because outreach is one of those uh, items that is one of the missions of this club is to uh, continue to uh, educate the public to um, work towards broadening the public interest in astronomy. Okay, dark sky sites. Currently, we have access to Star Ranch. Um, we are at Star Ranch through the end of July. It's almost the end of June. Uh, so over the next few weeks, there will be some decommissioning at Star. You can still go out then, there and observe. Um, at the moment, we still have the solar panels, so electricity is available. The composting toilet is still functioning. It's still out there. You do not have water. So if you are a smoker, please be very careful. Don't drop any, any butts down on the ground. Um, if you need an access code, the e-group files have that information. And again, at the moment, you have a 16-inch and a 14-inch uh, daub out there in the storage shed with eyepieces. Uh, over the next few weeks, the scopes will be coming back to the Burleson storage area. And, you know, uh, we will be taking the toilet out and getting it ready for installation at um, the new site. Um, but anyway, you are still able to go out there. Now, everybody, I'm hoping everybody knows that we are just about to close on a new piece of property in Rising Star. Uh, and I, Robert will have more information for us a little bit later as far as details, um, but it is about four and a half acres located in Eastland County. Um, just remember, the property is not ours yet. So please do not just decide Wednesday afternoon that you're gonna go out there Wednesday evening, okay? Just wait until we get noticed that the closing has actually happened and it's ours. So uh, just, just keep that in mind. Um, we are going to be organizing the deck, the deck that's out at Star, that wood will be taken apart and stored out at um, Rising Star, uh, area over at Rising Star to be determined. But my understanding is that it is several thousand dollars worth of wood that we can repurpose for other projects. Um, Tom Roth is going to organize any work parties for that. I'm going to let him take the mic. So we have a 20 by 20 deck. Anytime Michelle and I go out to observe, we've been taking out deck screws. So we're going to be out there this Saturday working on it some more. So. We need, we need a work party. We are going out to uh, Rising Star. Am I okay to say that? July 2nd in the evening. So July 2nd would be a good workday party for us. If we could uh, shuttle the wood from Star to Rising Star on that Saturday if you come out early. Um, we're gonna, I have a six by 12 trailer that I can use. If anybody else has a trailer that can all lumber we would appreciate that we have two trailers shuttling back and forth we have a crew down at rising star a crew up at star ranch and get most of that wood moved but it, it's all going to be a rising star by the end of july because that's you know, five six thousand bucks worth of lumber that we don't need to leave there and we can use it later and we'll store it properly so it doesn't rot or anything um, so if we can have some help i've got five or six impact drivers and all that stuff you have impact drivers and t25 star bits and everything we can pop that deck off or get most of it moved on that saturday so well details to follow later with that but we you know when we had work parties um, building it we had 10 15 20 people out there at the same time so if we could get 12 to 15 people out there on that saturday you guys can observe at Rising Star in the evening. We'll kind of work hard uh, during the day and move as much wood as we can and store it properly. And um, that way it's good for the future of the club. So. Very good. Thank you. 
Okay, so again, just to reiterate, the property in Eastland County is not ours yet. It's gonna be a few more days. So when everything is all said and done, we'll get notice and we'll have instructions on how to access, when to access all of that. I believe that Cy and John are working on a, a hold harmless agreement um, for that property. So before you go out, you may be required to sign that either electronically or sign and scan. So we will, we will give you details on that. Uh, I have a few flyers up front, but uh, for those of us who want to join after the meeting, um, World of Beer is at 3252 West 7th Street. It's about three minutes from here, uh, less, less than a third of a mile away. And you can have beer, wine, soft drinks. They've got appetizers, pub food. So it's a good, uh, good time to just sit and visit with everybody. And then uh, now we're just going to do our presentation. Bob's going to introduce, I guess, Robbie, and I'll let him give you more details on that. I'm being directed over here. So uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, we're all very happy to see lots of people here and lots of people online. Uh, we have two presentations this evening. I'm going to talk about Rising Star. I'm going to get that knocked out. Uh, it'll take a few minutes, and then uh, Robbie is going to give an introduction to EAA, which is Electronically Assisted Astronomy. Uh, he was part of the group that was at Rising Star about a month ago, and um, what, he, what he did was, was amazing. So um, looking forward to that. So I'm going to talk about Rising Star. Um, Robert Cargill came up with the phrase setting star for Star Ranch. So we have rising and setting going on right now. So I'm going to give an update. Um, so the last meeting, we, we agreed uh, that Rising Star was uh, something we're interested in, and we would make a final decision, or the board was granted permission to make a final decision based on an observing evening, which we did uh, towards the end of May. Um, Chris, could you flip to the next? Whoever's running. Thank you. So I'll just briefly talk about Rising Star here. It's approximately 4.6 acres. Uh, it's in a, in a rectangle. Um, and I, I think there's gonna be another slide later that'll go into some more details, but the, the key things for us to remember and that, think about is the observing area here. It's about 195,000 square feet flat. It's great observing area. Uh, it's mortal too. Great access uh, astronomically. Uh, and the, from here, the, the distance is an hour and 55 minutes. We had to pick a point um, for distance. And since we meet here, that's the distance from here. It's easy to get to. It's all highway. And then about 20 minutes of farm to market and one and a half miles of Caliche Road. Very easy to get to. One of the hidden gems of this, I, my favorite food is eggs. Uh, our neighbor, James Ross, they always have eggs for sale. So anyway, this is the general view of it. Um, next slide, please. So where are we today? We're closing on the 29th. Um, it'll be in person. I'm going to take the opportunity to do a couple of things while I'm out there. The survey is completed. Uh, the property, our property extends about 30 feet beyond the fence line on the east side. So um, that, was, that was news to hear. Um, we haven't got the final survey back, but I do know it's done. Uh, on the 29th, uh, since I'm gonna be out there, I'm going to, I'm meeting with the Comanche Electric Cooperative uh, to find out 
where to place power when we get around to doing that and a cost associated with that. One of the things I did learn uh, and I need to verify is uh, if we put a pole in, in approximately four or five years later, we get either a large chunk or all, or all of it back. It's more like a So um, this estimate here is something I got when I spoke to Comanche last month, but it's, um, it's all based on how far they need to punch the pole onto our property. The other thing that we'll have to do reasonably soon, but not right away, is we'll have to have an entrance put in. Eastland County does that at no charge, okay? If we need a culvert, we'll have to buy a culvert and we'll have to put a gate. We'll have to probably supply our own gate. I don't think they supply a gate. Gates probably aren't gonna be that expensive at least to start with. And I don't know if we have any welders, um, but we can manufacture a custom gate. My, one of my boys is a welder, so that'll be pretty straightforward. Um, if we do need a culvert again, it's about 850 feet. The county will take care of clean, clearing any trees on the county side of the fence. And if, for those folks that were out there, um, if you remember, there's a lot of trees on the county side of the fence. I and mean, wherever they figure the best place for the entrance to go, they will take care of clearing uh, the trees and the brush there. Uh, any questions, just ask. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. I don't have an answer to that. I kind of think it's going to be where they will have to negotiate. I think, but, um, and of course we have to factor in. We, we don't want it too close to oppose. Yeah. Okay. So um, some interesting or some other information. Our new neighbor. His name is James Ross. You couldn't ask for a better astronomical neighbor. They are really nice people. Um, he is interested in astronomy. He did astronomy as a younger person. So um, he, uh, Shane Griffith and I went out uh, to observe uh, Saturday and um, uh, James came and visited with me. And um, he's still running livestock. So he's going to put in a fence on the north side for for those that were out there um, on the observing evening, the, the north part of the property does not have any fencing. So he is going to put that up. He's going to put a gate in for us. Um, so that's phenomenal. And I'm, I'm going to tell him, I'm, what I'm going to tell him is we'll settle on a date. I'm going out there. I'm going to help him put up the fence. I used to have a run a cow-calf operation. Um, and I understand what's going on there and I'll be happy to help. And I will be sending an email out asking for help because the fence line is 800 feet now. So it's a lot of fencing. Um, you know, if he's going to put it up, we should help, help him, I think. So we're going to work on a master plan. Everybody's going to have input on it. But when it comes time to do parking, pads, um, any clearing, James has offered to help. He's got all the farm equipment we need to level, till, whatever. And that's a huge, huge. If anybody's done construction, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so. Saturday, the viewing Saturday was nothing short of spectacular. It was phenomenal. Um, the Milky Way was out in its full glory. And uh, when we were there in May, it was a little early. And uh, one of the really cool things, Shane and I were just kind of 
looking and watching, and all of a sudden we saw this huge explosion and plume uh, heading north, northeast, really. And we could not figure out what it was. And it turns out it was one of the Falcon 9s, one of three that launched that weekend and who was doing a stage separation. I have a photograph of it. It, it, is just, it was pretty interesting. So something else um, I wanted to point out too, the elevation at, at Rising Star is uh, 1,670 feet. So it's 1,000 feet. I live in Bedford, so it is actually 1,300 feet higher elevation than in Bedford. So it's cooler. It's You lose two degrees in temperature for every 1,000 feet. So um, when we were there in May, we got there, and I think the temperature was uh, maybe 84 or 85. And when we left, it was 54. So uh, Saturday, we got there, it was 100. And when we finished up in the morning, it was 74. It was quite pleasant. So anyway, so uh, that's what we, we accomplished on Saturday. Next slide, please. Um, so just a, a little more detail about the area here. Um, it's, it's pretty much rectangular, not the scale. That's really not true north. You know, it's just a, an, an estimate of what's going on here. So here's the eastern fence here. And the property line is another 30 feet, which I'm, I'm going to guess is about that right there. So, um, so the, the power pole that we're going to get our power from is actually right here. So from here, all we need to go somewhere in here, and the power company will tell us what the minimum is. Um, so as the fence line is right here, so there's trees on the inside and trees on the outside. And again, the county will take care of clearing whatever they need to create our entrance. Um, very nice shaded area. And then the observing area here, Again, it's approximately 190,000 square feet. So I did, I did some calculus. And uh, John, what's our current membership? Okay, there is enough space to put 181 pads and parking spots and still have plenty of room. That's how, I'm just trying to convey how large this area. It is, it is huge. Um, and uh, our neighbor, James, lives, his house is over there, probably about where the R is. Um, and again, they sell fresh eggs. So, the incredible edible egg. So that's what the that's what the property looks like. Um, so where do we go? Well, right here, literally right there. Okay, we'll go in on on the Ross's property, and uh, there's a when you pull in. Actually, so you, you see the opening right above the mic here. That's the entrance to our part, our property. So, um, so that, excuse me. Any, any other questions on this slide? Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so what's next? We should celebrate our independence. We have our own dark site. So, uh, I, <clears throat> on the 29th, I will be observing. I, it's, it's ours once we sign the paperwork, so I'm going to take advantage of being there. So if, if y'all, anybody wants to come out, no problem. If uh, you guys, if there's a, a group of folk or anybody wants to go out this weekend, I just have to call 
James and let him know. Oh, better listen to Michelle. So um, if people want to visit this weekend, I all I have to do is call James and, and let him know, and y'all can go out and try it out. Um, <clears throat> so as Michelle mentioned earlier, uh, we're in the process of creating uh, Hold Harmless and some other documents, rules of the road, that kind of thing. Nothing that we don't already sign for TOPS and our star. Um, things that we're going to have to do, I, I couldn't come up with a, a name, but so we're going to have to create a, a grounds committee. And the idea of that is to, just to deal with maintenance of the property and um, start planning on what we're going to do, how many pads, where we're going to put them, how we're going to deal with parking, how we're going to get in and get out, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so as far as uh, shredding, um, James Ross, he shredded the property for us when we went out for, uh, for our observing evening, and he'll, he's willing to continue to do that every three or four months or so. Um, so that's, that's the overall long, long tactical and strategic. Next slide, please. Okay. So the last meeting, Bill Hamill gave a presentation on partnerships. So, um, and some of the things he talked about made tremendous sense, you know, because we're going to have operational costs and that kind of thing. So, I listened intently to what he had to say. And I think there's some opportunities for us to partner, for example, with Rising Star, Independent School District, and Cross Plains. We can, hey, you know, see what kind of investment they're willing to share with us for us in turn helping them out at, at school or anything like that. Probably, you know, FFA, 4H, the county itself. The opportunities are there. And um, so it's, I think uh, it's certainly worth trying. And they're gonna say no the first time around. Everybody does. Why you go back and back. So these are some thoughts about partnership. Um, oh, did this slide duplicate? I must have. Oh, okay. So some things to, so here's some things that you need to, to remember. This property, farm property, it's Texas, prickly pear, okay? You don't wanna fall in it. Um, it's not very high and you know, we, we were stepping on it, no big deal. The thing to be concerned with is mesquite. It's shrubs and until we get everything squared away and, and get it removed, you need to be a little bit careful. Um, I, I think one of the first things we're uh, I'm going to do on the 29th is, is find a safe place to park vehicles, because Ravi had a kind of a poor experience uh, when he got home the next morning. One of his tires was flat because of the mesquite. So um, that's something we need to get squared away. When you're out there, I would suggest that you either have very thick sneakers or hard soled shoes or boots and wear long pants. Um, I don't think it will take very long to get areas that are free of the mesquite, but uh, you just wanna keep that in mind. Um, so those were the, the things that uh, we saw. And the thing about mesquite, is the mesquite thorns can be inches long. And uh, the indigenous people used to use mesquite thorns as nails. So those suckers are strong. Next slide, please. And that's it. Any questions? Any questions from the Zoom folks? Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. All right then. then. Thanks very much. Yeah.
welcome. You're welcome. So, uh, so uh, I'm going to ask Ravi to come up here. He's going to talk to us about electronically assisted astronomy. astronomy. And uh, I took some time to visit with him while he was out there at Rising Star. And uh, my wife is now mad at me. So anyway, here you go, Ravi. Thank you. So while they bring up the uh, presentation, I just wanted to share a, a little anecdote with you. So I attended the uh, Texas Star Party this year um, in Fort Davis. Um, had an interesting experience uh, that I wanted to share with you. So we went in there, and those of you who've been there, there's the Prude Ranch, and driving there, and they've got a registration desk. So I went up there, got my wristband, and uh, I. The, the main reason I went was to um, try and learn from other people who were doing electronic assisted uh, astronomy. So when I registered, I asked the gentleman there, I said, uh, I'd like to meet other people that are me. And he looked at me and he said, sir, would you please step aside? And I, I couldn't understand what, why this triggered this response. So uh, I stepped aside and he takes me aside and he says, you don't want to be talking about electronically assisted astronomy here. I said, why not? And he says, well, you know, those astro people, they won't like you. And you know, those visual people, they won't like you either. So, <laughs> so I'm going to go with the assumption that at the end of this presentation, nobody's going to want to talk to me anymore. So, <laughs> but anyway, so um, electronically assisted astronomy is, is, is the subject of today's presentation. I want to tell you a little bit about um, what it is, um, what's good about it, and what got me interested in it. I've, I've been doing um, visual astronomy. Um, I think one of the things that prompted me to look into this was the fact that we all live, at least most of us live in uh, very light polluted skies, which really, really limits what we can see, especially from our backyard. Of course, now that we have our fantastic rising star site, that changes things quite a bit. But um, next slide, please. So what is EAA? I see this um, uh, type of astronomy as kind of a halfway point between visual astronomy and full-on astrophotography. So what we do in electronically assisted astronomy is, um, is closer to visual in most ways, except for the fact that we're still capturing these images uh, using an astro camera. Uh, we usually use very short exposures, unlike in astro astrophotography. So typically between five seconds and 30 seconds, uh, because of which, um, as all of you astro photographers here know, there's no need for guiding because the exposures are short. And uh, we can use, we don't actually always need uh, equatorial mount. We can use other as well. There's actually people doing uh, EAA, even using a, a DOB. So the other thing that sets electronically assisted astronomy apart is the fact that you spend just a few minutes on each target. So it's much more like visual in that sense. Whereas an astro, you might spend, you know, four hours acquiring images for a specific target. Here, you get to see a lot more uh, in a short period of time. Next slide, please. So why, um, why did I get into EAA? And, and this, is, this is a long list, but I, I think a lot of these things would hit home with many of members here. Um, it allows you to see much more than what visual observation show you, especially again in um, light polluted skies like any anywhere around the Dallas Fort. The other part of it that really attracted me was the fact that there's a sense of instant gratification, and you know that that's always good, right? Um, the fact that you can actually spend a just a few seconds sometimes, 30 seconds, and you start to see things that you would 
never imagine you could see with your naked eye. That's, that's a big part of what attracted me. Um, it also allows you to see, like for example, we went out to, uh, to Rising Star, Robert was mentioning, and I think I got to see within about two and a half hours that I spent there, we looked at maybe seven or eight different targets, got great images, and I'm gonna show you some of them. Um, the other part of it, which is interesting, is that um, with visual, you're limited to what you can see, what the eye can see in terms of the spectrum. With, with this, it's closer to uh, astrophotography in the sense that you see what the camera can see, which is usually a wider spectrum than what the eye can see. And finally, um, again, the instant gratification part. You know, I, I keep saying this again and again, and to me, that was, that was the best part of all of this, the fact that I could see these images within seconds. Like, please. So what equipment do you need to do this? Very, very straightforward. I started doing this about four or five months ago, and um, I think the first setup that I did with my equipment uh, took about a couple of hours to download all the software and, and everything and set everything up. Uh, it, there is a learning curve for sure, but it's, it's not that difficult. Um, I have um, an eight inch Newtonian that I use, but basically any telescope. Uh, you do need a go-to mount of some type, whether it's um, uh, equatorial or any other type of mount. You need some type of astro camera, um, you can also use a DSLR as an alternative, um, a laptop computer, and uh, three pieces of software. So the ones that I use, are, they're all uh, available for, for free. The first one is the software that captures the images and allows you to live stack them. Um, the big feature of EAA is the fact that you're stacking these images live as opposed to astrophotography where you're acquiring the images and offline, maybe the next day or whenever you actually stack these images to produce the final. Um, I use a planetarium software that allows me to control the go-to mount. And I also use a plate solver uh, to finally hone in on any target that I choose. And all of this makes, makes things so simple and easy. And this is what allows you to see so many targets um, within a short period of time. The fact that you can use the go-to mount, the fact that you can use plate solving, and the fact that you can use live stacking. Um, I'd like to show you some images. So uh, we live in Colleyville and Bortle, yes. Well, realistically, the only thing that you need is SharpCap. That's, that's the software that's acquiring the images and stacking them. Um, I use the planetarium software and the um, plate solver only because uh, a lot of the go-to mounts that, as, as probably everyone in this room knows, uh, the go-to mounts need um, a fair amount of accuracy uh, in terms of alignment before they can actually accurately accurately point to a target. So the, the, the second and the third software just do that. So if you have a good system that is, is well aligned, then all you need is, is the sharp caps. Um, so these are some images from my backyard in Colleyville, Portal 8 even, possibly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, um, and as you can see, and I know, I know I can see all the Astro people you're looking at these images and saying, ah, come on, really? <laughs> but, but hey, here's, here's what attracts me to this. All of these images were from my backyard, A. B, they, I spent less than five minutes imaging each of these, believe it or not, five minutes or less. Some of them, like the Ring Nebula, I think that was two minutes of, of stacking. Uh, and, and that's what you see. And, um, uh, next slide, please. So these are the images that we uh, we got at Rising Star. 
uh, the first the first time that we went. Out. And um, obviously, you can see the quality is, is much improved. Uh, but um, as you can see, again, less than five minutes, and it it gives you images that um, I think really really make EAA something that uh, I feel like it, it's going to going to grow in popularity. The other part of it that I'd like to, and, and I, I think I have to be, I have to admit that I've been kind of remiss in not being at as many of the star parties and outreach events that we have. But I think this is something that we fantastic, the outreach. Because if you can show people, you know, within a couple of minutes, images like this, that's pretty amazing to me. Any questions? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And, and I, I went through, this is my second camera. I, I started with a really simple one, a $250 uh, ZWO camera. And um, if you go back one slide, yeah, the Orion image was with my quote unquote cheap camera. And that was a few months ago when I, that was the very first thing that, that I, uh, I tried. And, and then I've, I've decided to upgrade my camera. And, and just like you said, it's the path to, you know, the exact same equipment. So you can definitely get into astrophotography um, as, with this as an intermediate step. Sure. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely, that's one of the great things. So one of the things that actually, uh, how I first came across this, uh, this technique even, I, I had no idea that something like this existed, was um, I'd seen a presentation on um, a product called uh, EV Scope, I think is the name of the product. It's literally this big, and I'm not even kidding you. The, it's a two and a half or three inch um, refractor with all the electronics built into it. You take it to any spot, it, you plop it on the ground or on a, on a desktop. It aligns itself, um, figures out its location using GPS and streams images to up to five phones that are connected. Um, and the images that I saw from this product were, were pretty darn good. They, I have to say, okay, you're not going to get this, but you would get with a four and a half inch, you'd get great image. Anyone else? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> And, and again, that, that's simply because, um, uh, well, you, you need something that can, some type of go-to mount that can, you know, track. Because even with a short 15 or 30 second exposure, um, you are gonna need tracking. So a go-to mount is, is absolutely essential. But I've seen a lot of images on cloudy nights, for example, people posting images from, from Dobbs uh, or from, you know, a whole variety of other accounts. Uh, anyone else? Comment from saying, there was a comment from the Zoom meeting saying that uh, another option for the camera control and everything is ASI or Pro or Plus. There's different options. Yes, would be great absolutely. for the AA as well. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, the SIR Pro is an absolutely outstanding piece of kit. 
um, but uh, the lead times to get them are very, very long, right? Anyone else? Yes. I went ahead and picked up a Hyperstar for our C11. So I've been playing with it. It works really, really well. I have the adapter for uh, this older ZWO cooled cameras, not the new ones, not the full frames. But it is available. If anyone wants it, all you have to do is come over and get it. It is deforked. You can go ahead and put it up on your own mount, or it'll take us 15 minutes to put it back onto the fork, and then you can run it alt as. And I was able to get really good images of uh, pretty much anything in about eight seconds. And if I drop the gain down and gave it a 30 second exposure, it was really nice. It stacks very easily. The only problem is it's, it's a big heavy tube. So you have to be careful with it, but it is available. All you gotta do is come get it. So I, I spent the money on, on the Hyperstar, bought it used. So I did save some. Um, but yeah, it's, it's available. Just, just let me know. Thanks. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, Ravi. I, I first saw this at Rising Star when Ravi was out there doing that. And it's like, I had never seen anything like that before. So I think it's, it's a very interesting option. Uh, before we get moving, or do we have any other questions on the presentation? Okay, let's go for the raffle before we get down to business. Okay, we'll draw four tickets and see who wins what. Let's start with ticket number 0059. 0059. Okay, let's try again. 0051. All right, Patrick's won something. What about 0061? Ah, very good, Charlie's got something. Yep, any of that. All right, the next number is going to be 0048. Zero zero four eight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, zero zero five seven. I guess that's you too. Okay. Zero zero five seven. Okay. Give it one more and see who's got something. Let's try. It's probably going to be the same person, 0058. I'm trying. <laughs> zero, zero, 0046. Oh, Phil's, got, Phil's got something. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. There's, even a, there's still a Starbucks card up here. Goodness gracious. Okay, very good. Thank you, and thank you for your support of the club for that raffle. Uh, now we'll move on to the business portion of our meeting, and obviously the major portion of our meeting tonight is going to be our elections. Um, do remember, if you have not paid your dues yet, you are not eligible to vote. I don't know that we have anybody here in the room who hasn't paid. If you know that you have or have not, then just remember that. You have a question? Yeah. 
can you can pay your membership by using Zelle. Zelle. Yes. Okay, oh, yeah, and it's done. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I don't remember seeing your name on the list that was sent out yesterday. Yes. yes. I think that John will be able to do that. Do you want to do that now, John? Okay, then we'll cover it a little bit later. In, in general, what we find at the moment, we are still working on a, a membership uh, roster that runs uh, June 1st through May 31st. And what you will find, uh, and this has been my experience in the past, having worked the treasurer's position, um, you have some people who join over the year who uh, their lifestyle changes. Uh, and so they're not able to get as involved as they thought they would be able to, and so they do not renew. Um, I've seen over the years some people who have, uh, again, been members for several years and something changes in their life. So they, so they don't, don't renew, renew then, they then they may come back three or four years later. And then, and then so, sometimes so sometimes that's what you see as far as the fluctuation goes. goes. Okay. okay. Um, remember, remember that if you have, if you have a family membership, membership you, are you are only allowed one vote. One vote. Okay. okay. So remember, so remember that. that. Hopefully, Hopefully the two of you agree on it. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> Otherwise you'll have to take turns and see who does what. Uh, um, and again, we ask if you really are interested in the club, if you enjoy observing at the dark sites, uh, if you just enjoy the fellowship, do consider supporting and volunteering for one of the positions if you haven't thought about it before. Um, so again, nominations are open tonight for all the positions. Um, then we're going to start with the president. I cannot run again as president. I have served two full one-year terms, and the bylaws will not allow me to continue. So we do need a new president. Um, does anyone wish to volunteer themselves or someone else? Anybody want to volunteer themselves or someone else? Okay. okay, Robert Circus has uh, agreed to move from the vice president's position into the presidency. Uh, we do still need to have a vote, all in favor of having Robert Circus as the president for the next year. Okay, I do believe you will be the next president. Okay, okay, since, since Robert, Robert is going, going to be moving out, out of the vice presidency, presidency we, we need a position filled for the vice president's position. Vice, vice president works to, uh, obviously, obviously with, with the president, president helps in that role. role. Uh, I know Robert's been very helpful in getting all the presentations, which is, one again, one, one of the items that the vice president does, but he has also been very um, uh, helpful as far as, far as supporting, supporting getting all the detail information taken care of with the new site and uh, all, the all the detail stuff. stuff. So uh, it, it, it can be as extensive as you want it to be or as, as little as you want it to be. So do we have any nominations for vice president, either yourself or someone else? I nominate Michelle. No, no Michelle's. <laughs> No. no. <laughs> Michelle, Michelle is not going to be running for the vice presidency. <laughs> we, we, we really would like to see some new faces on the board because that then everybody has a different way of looking at things, and those new ideas are necessary uh, for the club. So, again, somebody besides me for the vice president's position. Yes, yes, Matt Reed did fill both vice president and president the year he was in here. Okay. So, so yes, no? Not right now. Okay. Again, some of us have family commitments and, and other life commitments that just don't allow us to serve on the board the way we would like to. Um, with the vice president's position not filled, 
uh, Robert and some of the other board members may be calling upon some of you to help take care of some of those roles. You know, uh, if you've got an idea of who might be able to help with the presentation some month or if you'd like to volunteer. Uh, please feel free to do that. I know we have, I, I know Robbie, of course, presented this evening. I've heard great presentations from um, David Bergman. Uh, Matt McCuller has presented before. He's great at what he's, what he, when he's presented. So think about that as far as presentations. Uh, we will need a new secretary. Someone who can actually take the notes at the meetings and at the board meetings. Um, just, just to record what's, what's happened. happened. Um, so, so do we have, do we have any, any nominations or volunteers, volunteers for that position? Robin, Robin's not able to commit right, right now. I've <laughs> remember, remember that, that Robert, next, next year. year. Um, again, again, if we do not have anyone who will fill the position right now, be prepared to have someone from the board, uh, Robert or someone else, come up and or reach out to you and say, uh, will you be at the meeting this month? Can you take those notes? Because we do need to record that. Yes. Yes. Go ahead and ask your question. The secretary, the secretary takes, takes notes, notes at, the at the board meetings and at the, and at the general meetings. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Here, let, Here, me, let me get that. Time, time, time to play. Let's make a deal again. Wait, wait, for those of you who yeah, can't hear, we've got, we've got questions on the secretary's position. So this, so this is Chris Ashford. I, I just happen to have read the bylaws. So I just wanted to say that the Secretary is also, according to the bylaws, responsible for all the club's physical assets. If you've read the bylaws, you've been nominated. Well, I would. So I'm in the same boat as Robin. I, I'm an officer on another club. And it's really absorbing all my time. So, like Robin, maybe next year. But I, but I, I did do a little chart on the, on the bylaws and the responsibilities of each of the members of the board. And, and something to remember, I know that Cy Simonson, has, uh, another board member for this past year, has taken over and sort of done a lot of our physical inventory. So sometimes the extra board members can help with those uh, duties. Okay? So, um, so yeah. Uh, again, again, right now, Sai has, has done a great job at trying to keep track of our inventory. And hold on a second while I go past this speaker. <laughs> Don't want to get these, these sound people mad at me. Um, but um, uh, it's, been it's been very interesting trying to make sure he knows what's at Star, what's at Burleson, what's here, what's there. So, uh, so yeah, he is helping us keep track of that. Okay, okay. Uh, um, treasurer, treasurer. Uh, John Jeromini is willing to continue for one more year. Now, now is, there is there anybody else who would like to, to, to help him with that or run for, run for that position? He's done a good job. Yeah. <laughs> I, I All right. All, All in favor of allowing John to remain for another year? Okay. okay, John, and you have, you have been a great treasurer. Yes, he, he keeps great track of stuff. Okay, we have an open director's position for one year. Um, John Baker has had to resign his position after one year. The open directors are for a two-year term. Uh, we have two who get reelected or who get elected every year to new members. So they, so they rotate. rotate. Uh, uh, since, since John is having to uh, resign from his position as director, uh, Robert Cargill has offered to fill that position. Is there, is there anyone else who wants to challenge him on that? 
All in, All in favor, favor of having Robert take that position? Hi, Robert. Hi, Robert, you're taking that position. Thank you very much. That's the open director's position, one year term to fill John Baker's position. Okay. Then we have two more open director positions. Um, Cy Simonson is going off of the board, and Tom Roth is going off of the board. So those two positions need to be filled. We do have um, two people who have uh, volunteered, Zach Smith and Bill Hall. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to run for those positions? Those are, Those are the two-year two terms, yes. yes. All, right. All right. For position, for position open, director open director number one, one Zach, Zach Smith, Smith for two-year two term. Is there, is there anybody in favor? favor? Okay. okay, Zach's on the board for another two years. Uh, and, then and then for Bill Hall, Hall to fill the other vacancy coming up for two, for two years. Okay, okay. Uh, Bill Hall will be our other director. open director. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Thank you very much for all of you. And if, and if, if you go home and you think about it and you decide, well, maybe I'll give it a try for the vice president's position or the secretary's position, let us know. Reach out to myself, reach out to Robert Circus. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, remember, none of the positions is really in there alone. Uh, because it takes, it takes the whole board to make, to make the decisions for the club. And as I said earlier, the board who's been in position uh, for, for both the first year I was president and the second year I was president has been very supportive. And we have had very diverse ideas, but uh, it's been great to have that guidance and, and to have them make decisions for the club. And I think it's, it's taken us through some interesting and challenging times. So that's good to know. All right. Uh, um, next, item next item everybody's going to want to know about is 3RF. Uh, again, again, for those of you who haven't seen email, email that is scheduled for July the 22nd through the 24th. Again, for, again, for those of you who are new, new the club pays for one bunkhouse, bunk usually a larger bunkhouse for the men, and then, and then they, they pay for a smaller bunkhouse to house the women. The women. Um, and, so the and so the club pays, pays for that, so you can go there and sleep for free and take your telescope. And you're basically responsible for getting yourself there and for getting your food. So um, that's available for that weekend. Uh, there are some RV sites that are available. I haven't had anybody say they're coming with an RV, but there are some available. Uh, the cabins right now are all reserved, so I've got a wait list going. Um, uh, uh, now, there is, is uh, Debbie Manning, Manning has a cabin, and she, and she has opened, opened up and said that uh, if, there if there is a, a, woman a woman who would like to split the cost with her, uh, the, uh, the two of you could share that cabin for the weekend. So, so if, that's if that's something you might be interested in, let me know, and I'll, I'll get y'all hooked up. If you really want to take a tent out there, you can camp for $5 a night. But I, but I think that some people who've camped in the past have figured out an air-conditioned air bunkhouse is a little bit better. better. <laughs> so, that <laughs> so that does make it a little bit better. Um, and, we're um, and we're hoping that we hit, hit before the wildfires this year, so we're hoping we don't have any smoke, smoke in the way. As I think it was Charlie who, who phrased it, I hope it's a smoke-free weekend. So uh, Saturday evening of 3RF, we do have a catered dinner. It's $20 per person. Uh, if you have signed up and you to give me money, I'm one who will collect all the money. So if you've got it this evening, you can give it to me now. Um, you can give it to me at the July meeting, or you can bring it to 3RF. Uh, just remember, if you commit to the meal, we're ordering it, so you really sort of have to pay for it, whether you're there or not. Um, the good news is it's usually a, a buffet dinner, and so there's plenty of food. Um, I know we've got uh, Rising Star that we've been focused on. Remember that we are still continuing to uh, keep Palo Pinto State Parks in our site. Uh, the Palo Pinto State Parks partners, I think I left mountains out of there somewhere. Anyway, 
um, um, I believe Tom, Tom, Tom is actually, actually on, the on the board of the partners, of the partners. And, I and I believe the next board, board meeting for them is August the 4th. So we may have more information after that point in time um, as far as how their schedule is going, if they're on time to open up in 2023 and things of that nature. For those of you, again, who are new, uh, Palo Pinto Mountains State Park in Strawn, Texas, um, is a new park with the state parks scheduled at the moment to open in 2023. And they are actually working to maintain a dark site, dark skies site uh, accreditation. So they're working very hard to keep their skies dark. Uh, they've got a place planned for us uh, at the beginning when they first open where we can hold star parties next to the group pavilion. They have got it worked out so that lights can be turned off in that area. Uh, they will work with us um, as individuals when we go out there to observe, just on an individual basis, for, uh, to control those lights to make it more conducive to um, observing. Uh, they do have a planned astronomy area that will be developed in the future. Uh, our goal is, a, is to work with them to get grants to help us help them develop a good astronomy area. And that's where we're going to be able to, you know, if we can get some grant money, get a very nice observatory, some very nice expensive equipment that not only we can use, but we can use it for star parties to help encourage the public. Mark Smith isn't here tonight, is he? He's on Zoom. Uh, do you want to ask him, does he want to speak to Palo Pinto at all? Mark Smith is in charge of, um, um, he's sort of, in charge of the committee that's working with Palo Pinto. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, the connection's not good. You want to try again? How does that work? Ah, so, much better. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> right now I'm investigating the uh, relationship between the Fort Bend Astronomy Club and the George Observatory south of Houston. I want to thank one of our members, Kurt Lewis, who is also a member of the Fort Bend Astronomy Club, who has turned me on to who I need to talk to, as well as their website. Their organization works through the Houston Museum of Science and History. So it's something we're going to need to think about how we're going to operate. But <clears throat> the one thing I have learned is that the state park system itself never had any type of concern. It was extremely supportive when they wanted to go out to the Fort Bend Park when it was established around 1983. So it's probably the closest thing we've got to our own situation. So we can take a uh, uh, page out of their book. I will say this, the reason for their observatory appears to have been Halley's Comet mania back in the 80s. On one night, they had over 7,000 people come out to the state park for observing. So that prompted the museum to go out and buy a 36-inch telescope that LSU Research was giving up, and that's what's in the large observatory. They have their own dome with a 18-inch scope that they put in it. So just some things to think about, and I guess the question is, do we want to approach our own Museum of Science and History to see if they want to get involved. Okay, that's a great idea. And that's about all I've got. But thanks again to Kurt Lewis for turning me on to all that information. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you very much, Mark. We appreciate you. Okay, okay. Treasurer's, treasurer's report. report. And, and I guess we also had a question from the Zoom, Zoom people. people. 
about, about the rising star. star. So, John, John, do you want to go first, and then Zach can let you know what the question was? Actually, I need to look at it too, because I am okay. Okay. So somebody was asking about money and that this first page here, and before I get started, first let me say, uh, anybody that has access to eGroup can look at uh, several documents. They can look at the yearly financials, the uh, monthly uh, treasurer's report, and you can see the information I'm showing you. This is, in fact, the entry for June uh, in the eGroup file directory. So right now we're sitting at about 82. It's unclear exactly what we're going to spend totally on um, uh, Rising Star, but it's gonna be somewhere between, what, Robert, 40 and 45 or, 45 and 50. So 41, 41 to 44, somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay, so what we have currently in savings and that savings was typically what was set up to put donations into. And so there you have it. As far as our uh, yearly run rate, for the organization, it's about 7,500. And uh, one of the, I think the document last month went through and described how that works on a per member basis. Uh, it works out really, really good where, when we're at 180, but <laughs> every time in July, we come to a cliff. So let's, let's go up to that cliff and I'll show you. Let's uh, scroll forward if you will a little bit. Um, I wanna just show you our membership renewal. Uh, we have had, uh, I don't know, eight-ish or so tonight, uh, plus a new member. Um, and I broke it down by how we were getting the money. Now we didn't, we didn't purposely do PayPal because we have an issue with our website and the way in which it interfaces with PayPal. That's why there's that 0.32 cents up there. We don't want to have 0.32 cents. We want it to be zero, zero. So uh, uh, I tried to get everybody not to use that, but some people are just set. So, <clears throat> Uh, and the rest of this is pretty obvious. I really was very supply, surprised, surprised and pleased with the response to Zelle. So you can see that its usage was far and away more than anything else. Uh, and let's, let's, so from this piece of paper we're looking at right now, we're 63 people short of everybody renewing. So let's go forward. Um, and that, that 180 is the total number of people we have, but we had a person sign up today, so 181. And, and we have another, we have two other people on the fence. So we just need to get those people to sign up. Let's go forward uh, to the bar chart. And this right here is the cliff. Uh, I've talked about it in years past. And uh, it's a pretty uh, regular feature. Whenever renewals occur, um, some number of people don't renew. And it looks like that. Now, the good news has been that during the year, we pick up 30 to 40 people. It would be nice if that happens again. <laughs> but that that is the chart and you can go back and look in the other charts from previous years in the uh i think there's three years of treasure reports out there on the uh, e-group and you can see this chart
Uh, I do have something about that. Someplace in here. Uh, updating the bylaws. I could not find a editable bylaws document. All we have is a PDF or a marked up DOCX, but we don't have the backup for that. So I can take and I can use that PDF to reverse engineer it, but that's almost like sticking my wrist out and say, just cut it. Okay. If you could, that would be most beneficial. I, I had to take the new member's handbook, reverse it. Hey, John, this is Cy. What version are you looking at on the bylaws? Well, I think it's 2.0 is what it says. Okay, thanks. Uh, whatever, it, whatever it is on the e group, that's. Uh, I'll see if I can find one. <laughs> well, if it's not on the e group, it doesn't exist. So whatever the e-group has is what it is. Right. Okay, so, um, and, and just a 30 second little blip here for anybody that wants to know how painful it is to work with technology these days. Um, since shortly after Memorial Day, I have not been able to, you, I have not been able to connect to Night Sky Network. Now, doing membership, I have to do that a dozen times a day. And people would not believe me that I could not connect to Night Sky Network. And I had the uh, ISP come out, they replaced the modem. Uh, I talked to Google who uh, provided the uh, Wi-Fi interface. And as it turns out, apparently one of those Wi-Fi interfaces has a corruption in it. Now, why it picked Night Sky Network, I don't know. But there you have it. <clears throat> Trying to get somebody to believe that something was wrong was a real challenge, I'm telling you. <clears throat> uh, concerning working on the uh, going from a fiscal year definition for uh, memberships to doing a one year from time of joining. Uh, I have made some progress on that. Right now, there's a bit of a problem with uh, mail merge because uh, we need to have some way to automate the process. I, I think what happened with our group is we did not have anything online nothing was online for membership you had to show up to a meeting you had to print on a piece of paper a person had to take that to a machine and put it into a machine and so forth so there was not, nothing was automatic so what we have right now is we provide the, the prospective member comes in and puts their information in night sky network we approve it we send, them a, we send them an email that says, please pay the dues. We acknowledge that payment. And then we send them another uh, message saying, here's the new member's handbook. So there is a conversation that's going on with that. And that same kind of uh, process has to occur in this replacement for what we currently have. Uh, oh, that is a mail merge kind of thing. So uh, the problem, it's not a big problem, but a problem we have is there's a limitation to a number of messages you can mail per day uh, being a humble free user. Um, and that is 100, I believe it was. It's either 100 or 50. So that's where that's at. I, I am um, definitely not close to finishing that up this month. Uh, next month, I'm going on a 30-day um, back to the woods again. Um, so it's going to be a while before I get actively involved in, in uh, continuing that process. Did, did I answer the question that somebody, that was it Fred Klitsch that had a question about the...
Okay, good. Does, does anybody have any questions for me? Yes, we'll take them. We, uh, we have, yes, <laughs> we do have a number and I will get it for you because I keep all that stuff. <clears throat> Uh, is is Jeff Jeff here? Uh, Bitwater. Hold on, just a second. I'll get that piece of information. John, I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, this is Steve out in Weatherford. Yes, I don't sir. know who your your provider is, but uh, I'm. I'm forced to use Charter out here for my internet service. And I recently got a notification from them that they are putting some kind of security software into their routers, which may block access to certain websites. And I didn't know if that could, uh, something like that could potentially be an issue for you. Uh, Cause it looks like some of the ISPs are trying to uh, provide some security through their routers and they may unintentionally block what valid websites. And, Again, I don't know if that's of any help to you, but that's something that Charter has uh, said they are going to do. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. Uh, that was one of one of the early on things that was gone over. Uh, that was not the case with this. It, this appears to have been an issue where the actual hardware piece failed. Uh, there were some. Uh, blips. Uh, we had a storm come through and there were some flickers of electricity. I don't know if it was at that specific time or whether that's where it came from, but however the situation is, that one DNS would not go. And it, it would go nasa.gov, it would go jpl.nasa.gov, but it would not go nightsky.jpl.nasa.gov. Well, I just brought that up for any of the other members potentially that might all of a sudden start running into uh, problematic access to websites that some of these ISPs are starting to uh, uh, do some blocking on their own. Rather, uh, and it, you have to download some other software and stuff now to try to <laughs> get control back. So, right. <clears throat> so the question is, um, how much money have we had donated? And the answer, well, I'm just looking at this year. And for this year, it's about $8,200. Um, and like I say, we'll accept, if somebody would like to match that, we would be certain to be able to accept it. If, and let me let me say this about donations. Um, our website does have a donate button, and that donate button goes through PayPal. PayPal takes a significant chunk, in my personal opinion, takes a significant chunk out of what you donate. It's it's a percentage. And I mean, if it's so for 500 bucks, they took out $15. I, I thought that was a lot. Uh, if you are so uh, of a mind to uh, donate, donate to, to us, us then, then I would, I would suggest, suggest you contact, contact me and I can either acquire a check or I can go to the bank, bank with you. Uh, the, the, last, the last one that we did, uh, I, actually I actually walked in with a gentleman, gentleman and we sit there in front of the teller and we switch bank accounts. So, so uh, it, it just, just it just depends. depends. I would much, I would suggest not to use PayPal. PayPal. It's, it's it's a it's a, it's a fee, and they, and they have to make money, money but, but there, there are ways we would, we would like to have that money. So, so. yes.
we have we have a liability uh, coverage for various things. I don't know if it covers specifically somebody running off with money. No, there is not. We have we have a general liability. Yeah, we have a general liability and a general property. Well, we can, what I would suggest we do with this is, is ask Cy, ask Cy, uh, Simonson to chime in on this particular item. Yeah, it was a question about board uh, officer's liability. Yes. Yeah, I'm working that issue with another entity that I'm the president of. Um, and I'm not inclined to get, uh, the only liability that, that I see for the, uh, for the board is if John runs out with the money. And that's the same problem. <laughs> Other than that, we really don't. Sitting right here by the door. the door, I mean, that's the reason I'm here. But, uh, I mean, we can discuss that at a board meeting. I can sit in and talk about that. But uh, unless there's some other concerns, and unless we're doing a parade or doing something else, or but if we're, if we're coming in on something like a, uh, like a sponsored, um, Boy Scout event or something like that. I mean, we're falling in on their events and supporting them. We are not holding an event. Now, when we do something out at, uh, out at the ranch and start uh, out at Rising Star and start doing something differently, maybe, but I'll, I'll look into that because I'm actually working that issue tomorrow on something else. Hey, John. Yes. yes. Uh, on the PayPal thing, if we've got an email address that is associated with our donation uh, account they can use friends and family and that does, doesn't uh, generate a charge i believe so if they want to send email, i think, money, I think zell, zell, zell has, has a five thousand dollar limit i believe i was just thinking about those people that are that are you know stuck on using paypal right, right i understand the, the the whole thing, when we step forward into the July meeting, uh, uh, executive board meeting, one of the things that we need to have is some positions filled that aren't officers and board. They're uh, committee chairs, uh, so forth, and one of those has to do with a person to maintain our website. Because, because right, right now, now the problem we we have had for quite some period of time is um, the, the website is really quite well done, but it needs to be maintained, and that's difficult. And we we need to have additional people that can make those kinds of changes. I, I personally would be able to, this is an HTML-based site, so it's not a, 
it's not, it's not built, built with any tools, tools per se. So, so if you know HTML, HTML code or JavaScript, that's the two key components of this site. Uh, I've worked with that, but I honestly cannot do that and treasure and fight Wi-Fi and do these other things. There just isn't enough time in the day. So anyway, that's that's something we can fix the PayPal issue by fixing the interface we have on our website. But specifically the issue with donations, my suggestion would be not to donate through PayPal. Any, do we have any other questions? Back, did that get everybody covered? Okay, thank you, sir. I believe, uh, let me make sure there's, yeah, that's all there is on there. Oh, for, um, thank you, Robert. Uh, Amazon, let me just mention something. I don't have the exact number here with me at my fingertips, but I could get it. Uh, Amazon uh, has a charitable giving that's called Amazon Smile. If you uh, designate a charitable organization that you would like to have a part of their profit given to that organization when you purchase an item, you can go to smile.amazon.com, designate that person, and that gives us a bit. And I think so far we've been running a little less than 300 a year in, in donation money from Amazon. Uh, there's two, two different, different uh, two different ways you have to set that thing up. One of them is if you're just going through browser usage, and the other way is if you're going through the Amazon uh, app on a smartphone. But that, if if you do work with Amazon much or a little or a lot, uh, we would appreciate you considering to. Make that, make that through Amazon Smile. Smile. Any, anybody, anybody else, else have questions? any questions? Thank you, Thank you John. And, and I know we were on the topic of donations. Um, again, again, for those of you who are newer or may, or may not know some of the history, um, the majority of the, the purchase, purchase price for Rising Star, Star has, actually, has, actually, has actually been paid for with, with donation, donation money. Uh, uh, we have had uh, um, a, gentleman a gentleman donated back in, I don't know, 2014, 2015. gentleman donated $10,000 very specifically for the club to be able to purchase land. We have had land donated to us for the purpose of being able to sell it and that money has gone into uh, the, the treasury. We have had people who have uh, not only recently, but in the past donated money to the club very specifically for land purchase. And John wanted to make a comment. Yeah, George, George's, George's company. John is, uh, uh, we have a, two, possibly three members whose companies actually donate to charities, and our club is a 501c3 organization, nonprofit. So if you have a company uh, that has a program where they will donate uh, towards nonprofits, consider approaching them to see if they would be willing to make a donation to the club because we have got donations. Uh, through those areas also. 
Okay, before ah, uh, okay, that's a, that that got the message across. Um, is there any other questions? Any other business? Matt Reed has something. Okay, for those of you on Zoom who may not have been able to hear, Matt Reed was asking about the property that we had been considering for a possible lease. Um, again, that is still in the works. The weather the night we were going to go out did not work out. Robert Circus is following up on that. That is still in the picture and a possibility. So it has not fallen by the wayside. Any other questions? Any other business that anybody needs to bring up? All right. All right, world, world of, beer. of beer. Thank, Thank you, very you very much for coming and for attending on Zoom. Bye-bye. <laughs>